Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. One can move ahead in life only with the right skills and education. Each one of us is responsible for our own skill development. Skills change lives. Hello everyone and welcome to the valedictory session of Super 7, the national level web talk series organized by Pete Memorial Training College, Mavilikara, in association with the World Youth Skills Day 2021. Yes, today is the day we have been waiting for. Here we are on the seventh World Youth Skills Day from the time it has started. Happy World Youth Skills Day all. The theme for this year is reimagining youth skills post pandemic. What can be a better way to celebrate World Youth Skills Day other than learning new skills? Keeping this in mind, the Internal Quality Assurance Cell, IQSE, and the College Union Atwea 2021 of Pete Memorial Training College organized the seven day web talk series on the seven essential skills inevitable for the modern teacher. Seven days, seven super skill, and seven super speakers. We had discussions on six, seven, six super skills, public speaking, cyber safety, digital literacy, media literacy, conflict resolution, and social networking on the previous days. The super speaker for today is Doge, Dr. George V. Anthony, who will be sharing his thoughts on professional readiness. Before moving on to the formal session, I warmly welcome Anne City Joy, the Religious Association Secretary for the Prayer Song. Thank you, Ansi. Now, I heartily welcome the program convener, Ms. Anu Esar, guest faculty member, Pete Memorial Training College, for the welcome speech. Thank you, Sapna. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to the last session of our prestigious event, Super 7. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome each and every present, everyone present here. IQAC of Peace Memorial Training College, along with the college union, Advaya 2021, organizing an event, Super 7, a seven days web talk series on seven super skills for modern teachers. The super seven skills we are dealing with, public speaking, cyber security, digital literacy, media literacy, conflict resolution, social networking, and professional readiness. The proficiency in these skills will guarantee a person's success in teaching as a 21st century teacher. Today is the last session of our Super 7 handling the super skill professional readiness. The most essential skill required for a teacher in this modern era. It's especially a great moment for us to have our honorable resource person, Dr. George V. Anthony, an expert in this area with us today. I would be delighted to take this opportunity to welcome our research person, Dr. George V. Anthony, Director of Providence School of Business Studies, Chengenu, which is one of the renowned business schools in Kerala. He is known for his academic and professional excellence. Recently, he has been awarded the Commonwealth Innovation Forum Award for his concepts 
implemented in management education during the pandemic. He also serves as the honorary regional director of Institute of Directors. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation and coming over for the program. We are truly delighted with your presence. I ensure that the next few hours will be enjoyable and fruitful for every one of you. It is my proud privilege to welcome our dear principal, Dr. Mariama Matimam, to this wonderful occasion. Her endless care, guidance, and support made this event a reality. Dear teacher, I cordially welcome you to this event. I welcome Dr. Velayatan Nair, sir, the man behind Super 7 program and IQAC coordinator of Peace Memorial Training College. He was with us from the planning stage to the implementation stage. He is the master brain behind each and every moment of this wonderful event. Sir, I welcome you to this auspicious occasion. I would like to welcome Mr. Abhi, Arun Abhi David, student coordinator, other union members, my colleagues, staff members, students, teachers, and students from other colleges and research scholars to this event. I would like to welcome all the participants who made this event a successful one in this hard time. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now, with immense pleasure, I invite Dr. Maria Matthew, principal of Speed Memorial Training College, who remains the staunch force behind every program for the valedictory address. A warm good afternoon to one and all present in this online platform. Respected resource person, Dr. George V. Anthony, my dear colleagues, students, and all invited guests, again, a warm wish to one and all. We have been interacting for the past seven days in a very exciting manner as a variety of skills of new generation were effectively dealt with. And as listeners, and as people who interacted in this program, I feel that each one of you are motivated to develop these skills, which ranged from digital literacy to public speaking. While applying these skills, we know we are living in a world of entrepreneurship. So more entrepreneurship avenues are open for each of one of you as you can explore Use your creativity and develop lots of openings, not for you alone, but for the society as a whole. And I take this opportunity to congratulate the huge efforts taken by all teachers and students of this college under the able dynamic coordinator who has understood the need of the time and has made this program put into practice and also made it more effective. We know we are all closed up and locked down at homes, but these should not take our spirits and energies down to the puddle of miseries or negatives. Rise up and become unique in all ways possible. Incorporate your talents, hobbies, along with the skills and become remarkable citizens. That is what is needed. If you have a determination, nothing can stop you. Today is meant for the youth. Skills does not develop all of a sudden. It will take a lot of time. And let this day, 15th of July, the World Youth Skills Day, be the beginning for the development of these skills. And let all your efforts be fruitful. And by the grace of God, let everything be okay. Let all the situations, the pandemic situation, be over. And we will come back to our normal life. Till then, 
don't lose your heart rise up as i had already told you and become remarkable citizens of our country let our country be proud of each and every one of you stay safe and healthy thank you thank you so much thank you ma'am I would like to invite Dr. Muntaz S, Assistant Professor of Peep Memorial Training College, to do the felicitation. Good afternoon to the respected chief guest of this day, Dr. George V. Anthony, Principal Dr. Maria Mamatu, all the faculty members, MED BR students, participants, and everyone present here. We are gathered here today for the last session of Super Seven Web Talk series. the indiana quality assurance cell and the college union adwaya 2021 come together to present a unique concept of web talk series where each day we got a chance to listen to talk of eminent renowned speakers talk about seven different essential skills for the modern teachers in association with the world youth skills day i am so privileged to felicitate this function it was really a remarkable program that proved we could overcome every hazard or adverse situation if we do it with the dedication and hard work each and every topic in the talk series is chosen based on the need of the student in the current scenario first of all all let me appreciate our beloved principal dr maria mamatu for encouraging and giving such an opportunity to organize this event she has relentlessly tried to arrange such program which has a massive impact she have a vision a sense of purpose a clear vision and a desire to render the work for students teacher we are very fortunate to have such a great envisions and facilitates among us next i wish to congratulate the brain behind this program is none other than dr velaidhan nayar the iqc coordinator and also the coordinator of this web talk series he is dynamic and enthusiastic with highly intellectual and creative person from designing the brochure of web talk series to designing the eminent speakers he took care of each minute details related to this program i take this opportunity to congratulate dr veeraidan nayar along with dr soni meri vargis the co convener for going beyond the call of duty let me appreciate the efforts of college union chairman mr arun ab david and other college union members who are working hard day and night to the success of this program and i wish to congratulate our college union adwaya for coming forward and working together selflessly for turning turning this program into a success as your name suggests you are unique this uniqueness you have shown so we are all looking forward to more unique vibrant programs and events from you all the best for your future endeavors next i congratulate each and every program conveners and student conveners associated with this talk series for this program the teachers and students came together and worked together with a vision to make this program a grand success i congratulate all the resource persons and participants with whom this program would not have been to successful thank you thank you ma'am now i invite ms meenu m of the first year beard for the felicitation safna am i audible yes meenu you are respected principal dr mariama matthew research person for today dr george v anthony all dignitaries teachers and my dear friends seven speakers seven skills and seven days that is super seven a web talk series on seven super skills for modern teachers this talk series has started on july 9 and today is july 15th the seventh day of the series In order to celebrate the World Youth Skills Day falling today, the IQAC and the College Union Adwaya 2K21 of Peet Memorial Training College Mavelikera jointly organized Super 7, a seven-day-long web talk series. In this series, 
seven most essential skills for the modern teachers delivered by seven resolute in this in their respective areas reimagine youth skills post pandemic this is the theme of world youth skill day 2021 like many other field the teaching field is also leading in crisis and reimagining the future in this covid-19 pandemic to reimagine it is necessary for all the teachers to develop their media and soft skills this session covered seven skills required for the 21st century teachers we have started from the public speaking skill on the first day and on the seventh day that is today we had been going through deal with professional readiness and in between we had gone through skills like cyber security digital literacy media literacy conflict resolution and social networking on this occasion first of all i express my regards to the college union chairperson arun ab david vice chairperson jebin fatima and all other college union members who had organized this virtual event and made it a success college union had organized a creative program and conducted in a constructive manner and the union all always ensure that students besides the union members could equally work and contribute to all the programs though the past is golden i still believe the best is yet to be for that i as a student representative assure active participation and cooperation in the upcoming programs of the union now i extend my heartfelt wishes to the most systematic hard working and organized person of our college who is none other than none other than our principal dr maria mamatima she always provided us with immense support and blessing now i express my congratulation to the union advisers dr velaidu naiser and dr soni mary vargis under their guidance and support the union is successfully conducting all the programs i express my wishes to the resource person of today's talk dr george v anthony sir who is here to teach us the skill of professional readiness I once again wish all the resource persons and teachers present here that they could continue to touch the lives and create positive impact on the life of others. Last but not the least, the success of a program lies in the active participation of the participants. We have teachers, resource scholars, MEd students, BEd students who have been with us via Google Meet and YouTube live stream. This has actually been a seven day journey. For each of us, we have passed six stations. In the last six days, under the guidance of the respective resource person. Today, we will reach our seventh station and our resource person is ready to guide us. And the reality or the fact is that after reaching the seventh station, the steering of our journey will be in our hands. So in order to reach the actual destination of our journey, that is to become a modern teacher with soft skills ability, we have to judiciously use and develop the knowledge of the skills that we have been acquired in these seven days. So I wish that all of us could reach the destination, our dream destination successfully. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you so much, Meenu. I know you all are eagerly waiting for the session 7 before moving on to the session I call upon Ms Libby Lembodiran to introduce our honorable speaker for the day Dr George V Anthony Libby please Thank you Safna am I audible uh, Yes Libby Hello everyone it's my honor to introduce our resource person of the day Dr George V Anthony Director, Provident School of Business, Fellow of IAAP UK and Fellow of Institute of Directors IOD, has over 25 years of professional exposure in the industry, academia, research and consulting. His visionary leadership, innovative initiatives and contribution to industry have been widely acknowledged. He has received several prestigious recognition, including Asia-Pacific Education 
Educationist of the Year in Asia Award at the first Asia Pacific Education and Technology Summit. Education Planner Award from the Asia Africa Development Council, Future Kerala Educational Excellence Award, IBMC Business Excellency Award, and the Abu Dhabi Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and Commonwealth Innovation Awards for Academic Entrepreneurship. Prior to his academic career, he worked with the Indus In Bank, Stock Holding Corporation of India, IDBI Bank, and SAP Consulting for a decade. Apart from being a distinguished management educator, visiting professor in universities abroad, board of studies member of reputed universities, he serves as honorary regional director, Kerala, of Institute of Directors, board of governors of Africa Asia Global Scholar Network, UK, chairperson, state of Kerala of International Chamber of Media and Entertainment Industry, and MC member of Kerala Management Association. He was formerly the honorary special ambassador of IAAP UK and serves as an advisor to strategic management, young entrepreneurs and startup leadership. We feel really privileged to you to have you here, sir. Today's talk will be on the topic professional readiness of teachers. Here we have a distinguished guest with us who would impart this knowledge to us. With great pleasure, Pete Memorial Training College proudly invites Dr. George V. Anthony to address our virtual gathering. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Ms. Libby, for the intro. And I take this opportunity to thank the institution, the Pete Institution, for inviting me to be a part of this program. Uh, dear Dr. Mariam Matthew, principal of the college, Dr. Bella Denayer, the coordinator of the IQAC of the college, uh, Ms. Anu Esar, who was interacting with me uh, all through the last couple of days, Dr. Sony Matthew, sorry, uh, Sony Mary, Mr. Arun, the chairman of the college union, respected dear professors, young future teachers of India. In fact, I was uh, interacting with uh, Dr. Suma Esar, my colleague in my college, who is a sister of Anu Esar, the other day. And it was, we were discussing about, you know, the seven uh, skilling programs that, you know, you have, you're organizing. In our campus, we used to have a similar kind of a program. Every day we have industry, daily industry interaction. And I understand the real value that it has brought to the students. And when I was told that, you know, you're organizing this kind of a program, I was really, you know, uh, even though I couldn't come online on all these sessions, but I have seen all the sessions. It's really great. And I felt that, you know, I missed the opportunity to have to have it live. But the, yesterday, I've seen a couple of, you know, uh, video records, and it was really awesome. Now, I know it is very difficult for us to uh, attend a session, especially after the lunch. So I have something for you. How many of you would like to have a pizza? If you know, if I could offer you. Are you able to see the slide? Okay, thank you. Thank you. How many of you would like to have a pizza? Like, uh, probably if maybe the college would like to offer you. Yes, of course, everyone will be interested. Everyone will be interested, right? In fact, no, this is an interesting conversation uh, which happened probably five years, you know, five years back or six years back between a customer service executive of Pizza Hut 
and a prospective customer. I would appreciate, you know, if you can listen to the conversation, you know, for the next uh, 60, 60 uh, 70 uh, seconds. How do you get all my phone numbers? We are all connected to the system, sir. May I order your seafood pizza? That's not a good idea, sir. How come? According to your medical records, you have a high blood pressure and even higher cholesterol level, sir. What? What do you recommend then? Try our low-fat Hokkien meat pizza. You'll like it, sir. How do you know for sure? You borrowed a book entitled Popular Hokkien Dishes from the university's library last week, sir. Okay, I give up. Give me three family size ones then. How much will that cost? That should be enough for your family of 10, sir. The total is $49.99. Can I pay my credit card? I'm afraid you have to pay us in cash, sir. Your credit card is over the limit and you owe your bank $3,720.55 since October last year. That's not including the late payment charges on your housing loan, sir. I guess I have to run to the neighborhood ATM and withdraw some cash before your guy arrives. You can't, sir. Based on the records, you reached your daily limit on machine withdrawal today. Never mind. Just send the pizza. I will have the cash ready. How long is it going to take anyway? About 45 minutes, sir. But if you can't wait, you can always come and collect it on your motorcycle. What? Yes, according to the details and system, you own a motorcycle. Registration number 1123. Go to hell! Better watch your language, sir. Remember, on 15th July 1997, you were convicted of using abusive language on a policeman. Is there anything else, sir? Nothing. By the way, aren't you giving me the three free bottles of cola as advertised? We normally would, sir, but based on your record, you're also diabetic. And you got your blood tested yesterday, which showed high levels. What did he... Uh... Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right. So what did you understand from this conversation? Or what is the inference that we get from this conversation? We have monitored more. You have monitored more. Yes, fine. Yes. We Google knows not, better. Yes, Google is uh, spying us actually. Okay. Then what else? What else, you know, we understand from this conversation? So nothing can be kept secret. Nothing can be kept secret. Wow. Well, that's great. Now, basically, if you look at this conversation, if you have a deeper look at this conversation, that's yes, Akil says, you know, no secret. The executive is discussing about the bank account details, the details about the vehicle, the interaction they had with the policeman a couple of days back. He's also mentioning about the daily withdrawal limit of the customer. He's also discussing about the blood test which he had very recently. As uh, Professor Mala Jayasri uh, stated, nothing can be kept secret. And more than that, the learning here is, or the understanding here is, Others know much more than what we know about ourselves. Others know much more than what we know about ourselves. And probably if you try to equate it or relate it to the environment which we are into, probably the academicians are into. Today we live in an environment, probably the candidates who are sitting in the classroom or the candidates who are listening to us over, you know, through various media, have better understanding on certain aspects than probably the facilitator. And this is the real challenge that, you know, probably the modern day 
teachers or the future teachers are going to face. And therefore, the concept which we are going to discuss today has high relevance in today's environment. Now, let me take to the presentation. Well, I believe that um, the teachers are always, or the future teachers always love stories. And I love telling stories. On a wedding eve, a husband asked his wife, what gift should I give you tomorrow? Because the next day was their wedding anniversary, the first wedding anniversary. With no doubt, she said, I would like to have a ring. You know what a ring is like, you know, because most of you have the ring in your finger. She said, I would like to have a ring. The next day morning before going to office, he came to the kitchen. He asked his wife, yesterday you said you would like to have a ring on the wedding anniversary. I would like to delight you. Should I give you a ring from a mobile or from my landline number? Should I give you a ring from a mobile or from my landline number? I hope you know what would have happened next. What did we understand from the story or, you know, probably what is the morale of the story? Can someone uh, discuss? What is the morale of the story? Or what did we uh, understand from the story? It's all about common sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's all about common sense. Yes. <laughs> I'm also reminded about another story which I read. You know, I used to read short stories you now when I have travel. Again, an elderly couple was staying in a flat in the 15th floor of a flat. And the early morning at 7 a.m., gentleman, you know, received a call. And it say, stated, your wife riding, uh, sorry, driving a red Maruti 800 car met with an accident and she's rushed to so and so hospital. So even with, without, you know, receiving, keeping the receiver, you know, intact, he jumped through the window. Because he cares his wife a lot. When he reached the, on reaching the 10th floor, he realized that his wife doesn't have a driving license and she never drives a car. On reaching the fifth floor, he realized that he was sipping a cup of coffee which his beautiful wife had prepared for him. And you know what would have happened when he landed the ground floor. What is the moral of the story? Whatever we do, we have to have presence of mind. We need to have presence of mind. Two lorry drivers from Punjab decided to go for an international tour. So they decided to go to Egypt. You know, Egypt is very much famous for mummies, right? Egyptian mummy is very famous. From a far off distance, one of them so a uh, demolished Egyptian mummy. So he stole the other person. A paka lorry accident ka case hai, And the other person looked at it and said, you're absolutely right. The number plate is also visible, BC205. You're absolutely right. The number plate is also very much visible there. It is written as BC205. What do we understand from this? What is the moral of the story?
it's not that we always jump into conclusions. We should be humble enough to understand and we should have the willingness to learn new things or willingness to understand. Probably in today when we discuss about professional readiness for teachers, something which I strongly believe is that a future teacher or a teacher, a professional into teaching profession should have these four competencies. common sense, presence of mind, humbleness to understand and willingness to learn. These are the criticals that you know we should possess. These are the critical elements that we should possess. Basically because the cost of ignorance has high relevance. The cost of ignorance has high relevance. It's often stated that you should learn from someone else's experience because when you try to learn from our own experience, it will be very much costly. And the value, value makes a difference. Value makes a difference. You will find two candidates studying in the same classroom, doing a program, like probably a program in law. One becomes a judge and the other person, you know, probably practice in a lower court. You will find two students studying in the same class, same college. One becomes an employer and the other becomes an employee in the same organization. The value you derive makes a big difference. And that is why this particular session has relevance. And that is why a topic which is chosen today has relevance. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Today we live in a highly, you know, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous business environment. We call it in, in technical terms, you know, we call it VUCA in, uh, uh, world. We call it VUCA world. It's very much uncertain. It's highly volatile. In the last four, in the last two years, if you look at, the classes are not happening. You know, Dr. Principal was mentioning that, you know, this is uh, in the last two years, you know, the classes were not happening. You know, the offline classes on, in camp, on campus classes were not happening. Yes. And it's quite uncertain. We don't know when we are going to have, you know, the traditional kind of system happening again. The environment is so volatile and the systems are so complex. We were used to, we used to have a probably classroom kind of a teaching learning environment in Esther years. And today, when you talk about, it's all about a hybrid kind of a system. Even the session which we have now, I sit somewhere else and all participants, you know, sit at their home or, you know, some other area. And this is the environment in which you and me live. And this is the real challenge that the teachers or the future teachers are going to face or the teachers are facing now or will face in the future. Now, when you talk, uh, talk about you know, the VUCA world in dense forest of Africa, a deer wakes up. She knows that she needs to run faster than the fastest of the tiger to save her life. At the same time, in the dense forest of Africa, a lion wakes up. He knows that he needs to run faster than the slowest of the zebra to have his prey or to have his food. No matter, you know, when you are a deer or a tiger or a zebra or a lion, when sun rises, we should be running. And this is the environment in which you and me live. No matter, you know, you do an MBA program or, you know, a teacher program like, you know, a BA program or an MA program or any other program for that matter, we need to develop certain skill sets. 
we need to learn certain things we need to unlearn certain things we need to relearn certain things as per the demand as per the requirement of the changes which are happening in the business environment or in the you know the environment in i mean as a whole well this is an interesting stride and i would uh, request support from a few of the beard or emet candidates who are doing zoology class or you know zoology specialization can one of you tell me what will happen if you put a frog in a pan of cold water and gently boil it if you put a frog in a cold water and if you gently boil it to probably 100 celsius or you know even much more what will happen it will actually try to swim it will try to swim okay uh, try to accommodate with that uh, temperature right it will try to accommodate with the temperature right well, i'm not a zoology student i don't know much <laughs> <laughs> okay probably maybe a zoology student can support what will happen what will happen if you put a frog in a pan of cold water and gently boil it right it's okay you have you know an interesting observation if you put a frog in a pan of cold water and you try to gently boil it you will find that the frog will sit there unless and until it is boiled alive and the learning for us is something different the frog cannot sense that the temperature of the water is changing as same as a case with many many individuals it can be a student or it can be a faculty or it can be any other matter because i'm restricting my discussion with this I mean the academic community i'm not discussing you know bringing in the business related aspects into consideration like the frog many students or probably many faculty or many future faculty i mean future uh, teachers we don't understand the changes which are happening in the environment and we don't prepare ourselves to take the challenges to take the opportunities of the environment today if you look at those professors or those teachers who are highly competent or who are who can handle the technology related teaching learning systems will have the flexibility will have the uh, flexibility you know to handle systems now so what is the outcome what is the outcome when you are not into you know that kind of an exposure even after completing the program you find it difficult to perform you don't know what knowledge to apply in a given situation if you are a computer teacher and you are asking a student to hit or press a key to continue or hit a key to I mean a key to continue suppose if this happens what will you do when you say hit a key to continue this is not what you expect it's all about the attitude you need positive attitude you know when you talk about you know when you talk about the um, professional readiness it's all about attitude and much more it's all about professionalism it's not that the, you develop knowledge or you develop skill sets or you acquire knowledge and you have a positive attitude it's much much more how you speak how you deliver even your dressing pattern your body language the words you pick the way you communicate the behavioral pattern everything boils down you know when you talk about professional readiness but unfortunately what happens in an environment is like you know what happens is 
like in many cases like what you see in the what you see in the picture this is what happens we develop certain skill sets we develop part of the knowledge that we should otherwise uh, you know have we we'll have some behavioral uh, we develop some behavioral traits and we go into the industry we get a qualification but we are not professionally equipped and this is you know this is the outcome if i ask you if i ask about this picture is it a parrot the answer will be no if it is a cat definitely it will be no if i ask you if it's a dog i'm not i'm sure that none of you will accept that this is a dog we never find this kind of a hybrid animal in the planet earth and this is the reality that you know we have to understand when you talk about professional readiness and what is the resultant aspect i get a degree i have a qualification but then i am not successful in getting the right job i am dejected i get a job but i am very much stressed i don't know what to do i don't know how to perform and i don't know what to do i qualify a ba program or mat program or nursing program but then i get a job but unfortunately i find it stress i am not able to manage things i am not good in multitasking now let me uh, take example from our our academic context what are the top challenges that we face in fact this is a uh, which is taken from a research output they say is that lesson planning accountability of students performance especially in the covid uh, scenario classroom management and discipline the supervisory role apart from the academic pure teaching role we have other roles handling difficult students handling difficult classes ongoing learning systems is self learning the changes in the you know the curriculum that we uh, you know which happen over a period of time all these actually challenge our faculty or you know the academic community and what is the resultant aspect you get frustrated you get stressed and it will have an implication on our behavior and also our approach towards others definitely it will have an impact on the work life balance definitely it will have an impact on our our response to our fellow colleagues we enter into a project but then this is what happens you know this is what what you find in the picture will be the final outcome and why is the stress the stress can be due to the role the multiple role we are into the stress can be because of the changes which are happening in the environment or in my role when i say environment it can be in the work environment as well as in the, in the personal space the demands of the institution or demands of the reporting authority on the demands of the students parents etc etc the control that is being exercised lack of support can be uh, an issue relationships yes relationships can be a major problem you know that can create stress now when you look at the causes of workplace stress probably again this i have taken from a research the long hours of working probably when you are into uh, you know an online kind of interaction you no know, of course you know you will be having sessions you know probably at 7 o'clock in the evening or in the early morning 6:30 or you know it depends on you know the schedule that you prepare sometimes uh, we feel that there is some kind of unfairness the lack of acknowledgement or the rewards that we you know we expect at times we don't have control over the the workplace you know uh, the activities that we do it can be beyond our control 
lack of job security you feel that you know the lack of job security can be a reason of course office politics which is inevitable in many cases no i just try to you know mention certain things that we can you know that can make us stressed or that really put us under you know a stressful situation and i'm very sure that most of you might have come across at least one of these aspects one of the, you know what i have mentioned in one of the statements i can't find the job i need i'm qualified i'm a qualified teacher i'm a qualified student i can't find the job i need i have done the course schooling i want to get into this college but you know i can't find an opportunity i can't get the job i need i found it i applied but i am not able to get it well i got the job i can't perform in the job that i found yes i started performing but i'm stressed in the job that i found i'm very sure that all of us seated over there you know all of us here in this room online platform might have or will experience one of these aspects now what are the effects of stress we talk about stress and what way it is affecting us again this is a uh, based on a research outcome primarily uh, based on the academic community the effects of stress on you know teaching community low morale and motivation you know increased job satisfaction i mean dissatisfaction conflict at workplace difficulty in managing or you know meeting deadlines decrease in concentration decrease in the again increase in chronic diseases probably some of uh, you know the people you know some of the academicians you know they plan for early retirement of course absenteeism from work is not a major issue there but still it is a problem and it's a problem now we understand the real problems that you know face when we are not professionally ready i think i have uh, some problem with the battery right when you are uh, not professionally ready so what is the impact it can have high impact it can have low impact some of us will have low impact or some of them as will have medium impact and what way it will affect us it will affect us in four different dimensions it will affect the body it will affect the mind it will affect the behavior it will affect the emotional emotions of an individual we frequently get into probably the skin irritations you know sometimes you know we have skin irritations stress can cause that the negativity which we have in our mind we fail in some uh, activity and then immediately we just drop it i've done it but i have not succeeded so i'm dropping it at times we don't get sleep at night we become more anchor you know we become more angry at times we have depressions and this is the impact of you know this is the impact of stress and now my question here is is moon more important than sun or sun more important than moon is a qualification more important for you or is career more important for you getting a qualification important for you or having a great career important for you i'm sure that all of you seated here will opt for the second option the career is more important for you and therefore professional dis, uh, readiness is a mandatory requirement how much ready you we are when we talk about developing our career 
And what exactly is professional readiness? Professional readiness is nothing but willingness and ability to work well with others and display situationally and culturally appropriate demeanor in terms of four aspects. Which are these four aspects? Knowledge, skill, behavior, and professionalism. When you're doing a professional program, there are many things that you need to learn to new. There are many things you need to unlearn. There are many things you have you need to relearn. When you talk about skilling, skilling or skill always has a shell life. Certain skills, you know, which are important at some point of time, and certain skills, you know, you need to relearn, certain skills you need to unlearn, certain skills, you know, you, to, you, to, you need to learn in the tick of time. For example, as an academician, you have to have knowledge on artificial intelligence. Business analytics is something that, you know, we all should necessarily have, you know, working knowledge. We should know how to, you know, um, uh, use uh, online platforms. Networking, behavioral aspects is also equally important. The positive mindset, ability to understand the changes which are happening in the environment and getting aligned to those requirements. Willingness to understand, willingness to have a change behavior aspect, willingness to change in line with the requirement. Willingness to learn. And finally, professional readiness in terms of professionalism, the way we do things, the way we present things, or I would put it in a more simplest format, doing the right things for the right reason, for the right logic in the right way. And this is all about professional readiness. And it varies from uh, probably industry to industry, it varies from individual to individual. When you talk about new normal to the next normal, especially in the post-COVID kind of a scenario, there are five things that we need to understand. Today, there is a greater need for responsible team members. I may be a good teacher, but you need to be a good team member. Now, I was listening to the earlier speakers. They're talking about the team cohesiveness. I heard the names of few, you know, couple of professors and students. And the beauty of this program is a resultant outcome of the team effectiveness, the need for responsible team members, strong commitment for lifelong learning.
Hello, we will rejoin within two minutes. Hello, sir. Well, sir. I'm sorry, uh, I apologize for uh, the inconvenience. Uh, let me continue. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Awesome. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I had some power issues. Right, I'm sorry. Now, if you look at the new normal and when you talk about the next normal, what is happening now and what is going to happen in the future, there's a great need for responsible team members. And this is not applicable to the corporates alone. This is applicable to, you know, the, uh, I mean, the, not only to the industry, even to academics or even colleges. Because the success of an institution depends on the team cohesiveness. And the need for uh, long-term, lifelong learning is highly relevant in today's environment. I remember when I was a student, an MBA student in way back in 94 to 96, we learned certain concepts. And today, when, I'm a, when I teach uh, enterprises planning on information security to my candidates, I'm discussing certain things which I have never learned in my syllabus. So it's all about lifelong learning. Today, probably all of us seated over here or most of us seated off, off, over here have in the last or in the past one year have learned new competencies, how to use online systems for the teaching learning process. And I'm very sure it's all about lifelong learning. Probably in my generation, the individuals might have switched to one or two jobs or a couple of jobs, but in, in the future, you will find that the candidates or the young teachers who are seated over here will think for you know changing the career multiple times than you know what we have seen in the Esther years. And another important aspect that we find in today's environment is societal and the corporate challenges will test educational institutions. The need for, you know, the needs in the society, the needs in the corporates are the real challenges that, you know, the institutions are going to face. The problems that you find in the in organizations or in the society have to be resolved by the education institutions. We have to train the candidates to, you know, to accept the challenges and to resolve those requirements in the environment. Education is becoming more interdisciplinary. If you look at the projects which you are doing, most of you, I understand that most of you are m and b candidates. The projects you are doing, I'm very sure that 90% of the projects you are doing are interdisciplinary. Even this topic which we are discussing now, it is academic related. At the same time, this is more managerial oriented or it is related to management. We've been discussing about stress management. So it's all about interdisciplinary kind of work, which is going to be you know, in the future. Or if you look at the researchers, research activities which are happening, some more the recent research publications, you will find 
that most of these researches are interdisciplinary research or the research, the PhD or the doctoral research work which we are doing, which we are finding today are more interdisciplinary in nature. And most importantly, hybrid work environment is to stay for long. And from now onwards, it is all about hybrid work environment. Gone are the days that, you know, we thought about having, you know, uh, offline classroom based teaching learning process. Of course, you will have it. You will have the traditional system. At the same time, you will have new models emerging out. And this hybrid system is going to stay for long. Even after COVID-19 issues are resolved, you will find that you know this trend is going to continue. If you look at the government policies, many, many universities, there are universities which are permitted to conduct online programs. And the online programs will be have will have much acceptance in the years to come. And lifelong learning is going to exist. And these are the changes that you know which are happening in today's environment. And uh, education institutions and the academicians will have to understand these facts and have to develop appropriate skill sets when you talk about your professional readiness. If you don't understand these changes in the environment, I'm pretty sure that we won't be able to, you know, create value for ourselves and take advantage of the opportunities that are being, you know, there, which are in existence in the environment. And therefore, what should we do? As young future teachers, or academicians, what should you do? We need to have certain realizations. We need to develop a practical perspective beyond technical expertise. When I use the word technical expertise, what I mean is you will be uh, probably uh, specializing in mathematics, you'll be specializing in history or geography or you know some other subject for that matter or commerce. You will have fundamental knowledge. You will have great knowledge in the technical, you know, you'll have technical knowledge, expertise in that particular subject. But how is these or how are these concepts being used in a practical scenario? For example, if you are uh, uh, you are specializing in commerce, what what is the relevance of IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards? how it is being implemented in, uh, in corporates. What is its application or you're specializing in statistics? How these statistical tools are used in organizations and in industry. And this is the knowledge that we need to bring into the classroom when we interact with your, the future students, the, which probably you are going to you know, interact with or mentor in the future years or the years to come. Not only the theoretical or the technology, we need to have the practical perspective. How to apply these concepts or how these concepts are being applied in, in the industry or in practical scenario. And the major competency that you know, we need to develop or we need to acquire is adaptability and flexibility. We find many, there are many cases that you know, we find, I'm not, I cannot accept this. So I'm just moving out. I cannot be flexible enough. But let me tell you, my dear young friends, that the two critical competencies that we need to develop when you talk about professional readiness is adaptability. Adapt to situations. And we should be flexible enough to adjust to the requirements like what we have done now or what we are doing now. We know that, you know, we can't have a offline kind of an interaction. So we are having an online system. So we are flexible enough to understand and accept the reality and align ourselves to the requirement. Another important aspect that we have to develop is inculcate as a learning agility, or otherwise I'll put it learnability. Your willingness to learn new things how fast we learn. Probably you will be learning certain concepts now. 
but when you actually into the you know into the industry or when you actually into teaching profession there will be certain new other things which you will be you'll have to learn and therefore how agile you are how fast you are how confident you are in learning new things holds the key and today when you talk about decision making it's all about data driven decision making gone are the days that you know we take decision based on certain presumptions based on certain bias today we take decisions based on based on data so that you don't have uh, you will not have problems you will not have a wrong decision and one of the most and the important aspect that we need to develop is resilience many a times that you know we find you know we move out from a project we move out from a studying a subject or doing a certain specific thing if we fail if you fail on something then we will never you know most of us we never turn to that side so i may fail so i don't i will not sing because i don't have you know last time when i sang a song it was an utter failure so i will not and this is something that we need to understand we need to be resilient let us fail learn from it come back come back fast and this is a quality that we need to develop and this is the quality that this is something this is a trait that you need to help your you know uh, the trainees to develop unless and otherwise we as teachers develop this trait how can we impart it to the young kids we find in kerala we find lot of suicidal cases right the small kids you know they commit suicide they cannot accept tension they cannot accept few you know they get suffocated we don't accept failures failure we feel that you know failure is a big sin who said it we should fail we should learn lessons from the failure and resilience is something that you know we need to you know we need to have you know if you are planning for a career and the most critical aspect is your professional image what is the image that you are carrying what is the professional image i would like to carry what is my brand value it's not that you know somebody say that uh, she is working in that college no the college has to be you know the unknown with that person's name and that is a professional image that you know that we have to you know create and these are the aspects that you know we should definitely focus now when i talk about professional image there's something which i feel that you know it has to be discussed little more detail i'm sure that you know everyone has a professional image you and i have a professional image or i'll put it little more uh, specific we already have a professional image we already have a professional image but it has two versions generally it has two versions which are those versions one is version number 1 it's by design and version number 2 it's by default one is the best scenario and the other one is the worst scenario i say that i am something but someone else feel that i am different you are what you say you are that's a best case scenario i say that i'm a specialist in information security management and they have to demonstrate others should also feel it you are what everyone else says you are that's a worst scenario i say that i am something but others feel that i am not that i am something else so i hope you know we understand the difference so we need to work on a professional image to have the best case scenario which is mentioned over here and how do we do that and therefore professional readiness has a key role to play 
When you talk about professional readiness, it has four major comp components, four major components. Your experience, definitely, yes. The subject matter, the knowledge on the subject and your general knowledge, knowledge on the environment. I'm a faculty probably into commerce stream, but I do have fairly good knowledge on related areas. I do have a little knowledge about economics, statistics, and related areas. So your general information, the global information, and also the subject-specific knowledge, the skill sets. Each domain area, we have to have certain specific skill sets. At the same time, we have to have some generic skill sets also. A communication skill is a generic skill set. Your ability to use computers, internet, again, generic system. But your uh, each subject for your mathematician, you need to have certain specific. You would be very good in num have your numerical skilling is very much important. Another major factor when we talk about professional readiness, which really influence a lot, is your relationships. When I talk about relationships, I strongly feel that this is something that we need to, or you know, the professionals who are into, I mean, academic arena need to develop. Unfortunately, we find you know this not happening in the academic community as such. Networking is an important aspect. How much connected we are with the industry. Because we learn theory, we teach, we learn, we teach theoretical concepts. How are these concepts being implemented in a practical scenario? And we as a faculty need to understand how it is being done in industry so that the knowledge, this knowledge can be given, you know, given the orientation can be given to the, you know, the young students, student community. So networking with corporates is very much important. Probably somebody uh, doing a BCO, BBA, sorry, uh, BA program, he asked me, I'm into an, an education or academic sector. Why should I have uh, uh, connect with the industry? For example, if you are uh, doing BA in biology, you can develop connect or you should develop networking companies into biotechnology. How do they do things? What technologies they have? How do they make use of technology in doing their, you know, in the processes? And, you know, that knowledge that you can impart to your students. Now, when we talk about professional readiness, the most important aspect is related to self. The other three aspects are, you know, probably connected, you know, with the other three success factors are really connected with something else. But... The fourth factor, which is the core, which we have to work on. We have to patiently work on. That's your productivity, personal productivity, your organizing skills. How do you manage your time? How efficient you are and how effective you are? How do you manage the processes, the various activities that you do? How do we renew ourselves? in learning new things, in understanding new things, and the integrative thinking, how do you accommodate, initiate discussions and accommodate the views of others as well. Now, the win to win is important, but the will to prepare is vital. The wish to win is important. I want to win a match or I want to win something. I want to get something. I need to develop something. But your decision to prepare for that success is more vital. When you talk about professional readiness, it need to be, you know, we need to have a focused approach. We, it should has to be appropriately planned. It need to be structured. There should be a disciplined approach. Professional readiness, you know, will not happen just like that. We need to go in a highly disciplined way because I'm sure this is a word which we all use or, you know, probably the uh, uh, professionals into uh, education, probably MED and BED. My sister is a uh, MED and uh, she's an associate, associate professor in a college. Uh, Dr. Renu Anthony, I think she is also there in this forum. 
So that's something which we use frequently. My mother used to do it. She's a teacher. She used to use this word discipline. When you talk about professional decision, sorry, professional readiness, it's all about professional discipline. Now, how do we practice it? When you talk about career, when you talk about career management, it's all about the dream. I was listening to Madam Principal, you know, when uh, she was making the introductory remarks. She was touching upon this, this particular aspect. The power of dream, build, dream building. Unless and otherwise we have a dream, nothing will happen. And again, it is not that we have a dream. It has to be on paper. You have to think on paper. When I use the word think on paper, I really mean it. It's not that we have it in our brain or, you know, we just think over it ever, over and over and again. You have to write it down. You have to put it black and white. At this age, this is what I want to become. And these are the cons these are things I need to learn. These are the competencies I need to learn. And think on paper. Always think on paper because when you there on paper, that you can feel and touch and feel. When there is something that you can touch and feel, that will be there embedded in our mind. Now, just having a dream is not good enough. Just having it in paper is good, not good enough. We need to plan. It's often stated that proper prior planning prevents poor performance. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. I'll just uh, sir, tell you something which I practice in my business school. At the time of admission, if when a student walks into my office, I ask for his objective, why he is doing an MBA program. What is his objective? Which company he would like to join on completion of his program, whether he get it or not, that's a different thing. But I just want to know whether this guy has got a has got adequate, I mean appropriate clarity. When our students have clarity on day one, this is that you know I want to achieve. The planning starts from there. It starts from day one. That's why I said proper prior planning prevents poor performance. Now, when we have a vision, when we are clear about our objectives, we'll have proper planning and we will achieve results. There is no scope for poor performance. And I always suggest that we have to have a notepad with us to write our daily activities, what we are going to do today. What we are going to I mean, I mean a planner, what you're going to do today, what you're going to do next, I mean the next day, and what is your agenda for a month? What do you what are those competencies that you are going to develop or you are going to inculcate or learn in the next 15 days? And this is something you know which is very much required, you know, when you talk about professional readiness. And this is an interesting, you know, model. I hope you know you might have. Uh, discuss this in, in length and breadth in various sessions. The Pareto principle, that 80-20 rule, it states that 20% activities that we do in our daily life contribute 80% of the result or 80% of success. 20% of the activities that we do contribute 80% of the success. And 80% of the activities that do on a day will contribute to only 20% of the success. So where should we focus? Should we focus on the trivial many or the vital few? If you have 100 things to do, you have 50 things to do, which are those 10 things that is going to contribute 80% of my output, success, or result? Which are those 80% which is going to bring only 10% of my or 20% of my output or result? This is something that you know we need to work on. But how do we work on that? We look at the consequences of our action. 
attitude towards time horizon what should i do now what should i do tomorrow what should i postpone that we ourselves need to understand now i have a question to you is procrastination acceptable you know what is what do you mean by procrastination right postponing things how many of you feel that how many of you feel that you know procrastination is you know really uh, it should not be done in you know certain programs you know training programs and i ask some of them say you cannot you should not do procrastination you should not postpone things but let me tell you my dear friends you have to do procrastination you should do that you have to postpone things but what is that you should postpone practice creative procrastination practice creative procrastination procrastinate on purpose procrastinate those things which are not urgent procrastinate those things which are not important do those things which are urgent and important today and something which is not important you can just procrastinate it or you can you can ask someone else to do and this is something you know you we have to as professionals we need to procrastinate we have to do that now the thing you know when you talk about professional readiness it's all about upgrading your skill sets now you all have decided to be into academic sector or you know into education industry you're doing a ba program and the mad program now or you know we have done our phd as well now what is the minimum requirement at any point of time continuous learning is a minimum requirement continuous learning is a minimum requirement today at 47 i know that i need to learn i'm learning certain new things because i'm going to compete with somebody at the age of 27 or 35 who has better skills than you know on areas where i may not be competent therefore i need to upgrade myself i need to learn new things so upgrade your skill sets as per the need of the hour understand the environment understand the skill sets which are there in the mean required in the environment in today's and you know tomorrow's uh, you know perspective unfortunately what happens is many a times we prepare ourselves for jobs or skill sets which are not required or jobs which are not in existence now or which jobs which are not going to be in existence in future years and we prepare we rarely plan for those jobs which are going to create future or which which are going to be there in the future we are we rarely focus on those skill sets which are going to create opportunities in the future so understanding the environment is very very important understanding the environment and the opportunities which are going to be there in the environment is important and aligning ourselves upgrading our skill sets in the line line with those requirements is a key but we talk about upgrading ourselves something that we need to understand is a key constraints there are certain things which hold us back somebody might have said you know okay he, this guy cannot sing this guy cannot come into the friend and then make a presentation no we know that you know you are going to be a teacher we know that you have to be in the public and speak therefore we need to develop those skills as you know you cannot be shy and move backward my suggestion is understand what is holding me back what exactly is holding me back that, that each one of us can identify not others do something today do something today to overcome it you should do anything to overcome that but get started and that is something we have to do it's not that you know postponing things you cannot postpone that do something 
yes, this is my limitation. I have to overcome it. My some of the students used to come and uh, come to me and tell me, sir, you know, I am um, I do have studied in a Malayalam medium school, so I find it difficult to speak. I tell them, my dear friend, start speaking. Let you go wrong, and no problem. Unless and otherwise we start, it will not happen. So identify the key constraints and then plan accordingly. Now, this is something that you know, uh, which we need to uh, really uh, understand. I was talking about body language earlier. It's good that you know we develop skill sets. It's good that you know, we develop knowledge. You know, work on our knowledge on our behavioral pattern at the same time, your appearance is also important. I don't think anybody will uh, prefer the photograph, the person the, of the photograph which I've shown in the top end extreme left. Because appearance also matters. How do we present ourselves? Your body language, your grooming is important. When you talk about professional readiness, Package yourself, I would say it was the right word, personal branding. What is, how do you brand yourself? You have to be a brand. Why should, when we attend an interview, why should a college or a school should select a particular candidate? Why should a college should select me among many others? I have to have professional branding. They have to derive value, which I mentioned in the earlier part of my interaction. They have to identify the value in you, the real value in you. I would say, manage your own professional image before others do it for you. And we should all focus on one thing, mend the gap between you are and what you should be. What am I now? What I should be when I actually move out into a school, you know, or a college for a job. What am I now and what I should be and try to mend the gap. What is the gap? What exactly is the gap? And how am I going to, you know, you know, uh, reduce the gap? And this is something that, you know, we need to understand. My dear young friends, when wings of change blow, when the winds of change blow, some run for shelter, some build windmills. Am I going to run to a shelter or am I going to build windmills and take advantage of the situation? Those who are uh, lazy, probably who are less motivated, who, are, who doesn't have a commitment, who doesn't have self, uh, probably self-respect or so, we go to the shelter. I can't do it. We always have that can't coming in, you know, the can't statement coming in. I can't do. I'm not good. I'm not good in this. I'm not good in that. But those prudent, those visionaries, those candidates who are really passionate about their career, they will build, build windmills. And I'm sure that all of you seated over here, all the uh, B and an MBIT candidate seated over here will build witness. And at the end, are you or what is that, you know, what is your passion? Are you like the frog which we mentioned or the frog which uh, we mentioned in the early part of our discussion? Sitting there ideally without understanding the changes happening in the environment and enjoying the small uh, the you know the fly which is uh, which is shown in the picture or are you like the rabbit which i've shown you very much energetic very much enthusiastic to reach the target reach the success on time this is something which we have to understand now trying and trying to understand it from a teacher perspective from an academician perspective when you talk about Spelling success, when you talk about tasting success, we need to develop these competencies for our professional readiness. Adaptability. Am I good enough? I'm, I'm do, am I have the capability or am I willing to adapt? Adapt to the situation. Whatever situation I am planted. How about your confidence level? 
I am confident enough to work. How about your communication? Communication doesn't mean that you know uh, the other person understands it. It should. It is something that the other person should not misunderstand you. It's not that someone understands you, but you know, you should not misunderstand you. Are you a continuous learner? Do you have the willingness and you know ability or agility to learn? How about your leadership competency? When I use this word, you know, many students in my in certain campuses used to say, "I am not a class leader, so how can I show my leadership capability? I am not, you know, uh, head of the department, so I can. How can I show that capability?" Each individual is a leader by himself or herself, but it depends on the role, the kind of, uh, you know, the activities you are into. A student. in a class is a leader when the faculty when your professor is giving you an assignment and dividing you into a teams a team of four you will have a team leader or you will a team member as a team member you have to show you can definitely have you know exhibit your leadership capabilities you don't have to be a class leader to be a uh, you know to show your uh, leadership competency each one of us is a leader identify the leadership in us empower enrich and transform get transformed networking my dear young friends this is something that you should before you pass out of your campus develop good networking with the real the professionals who can really guide you who can mentor you who can lead you in a friend in your career understand the technology when you talk about professional readiness unless and otherwise we know about technology we cannot work and gone are the days that you know we can live without you know we used to live without technology i hope you all have a mobile phone with you and how many of you have mobile phone without internet connectivity i'm sure that none everyone has connected you know a mobile phone is connected with in the internet connectivity so today when we talk about academics when we talk about education when we talk about you know education management when you are planning to have a career in education management you have to understand technology ability to manage online reputation it's something very very important you know we all see online channels you all have youtube youtube channels why do you you know produce something relevant and knowledgeable which can be shared maybe probably based on the subjects you learn so that you know it is known to everyone and by the time you pass out people understand if such and such person post a I uh, mean, you know, a file that will be of use. Manage your online reputation. Create a brand of yourself. And at the end of the day, when we talk about professional readiness, it is all about resilience. I have discussed a couple of points here, but everything boils down to this particular aspect: resilience. You should be prepared to fail. Let us fail. Let us fall. But how fast we come up that is the you know that is a real challenge and you know that is something that you know we need to practice resilience how fast how soon you can come up from a failure from a difficult situation and move ahead and this is a competency this is the competency that we all need to develop when we talk about professional readiness and finally before i conclude i started with a story i also would love to can and conclude with another story this is a story between you know the conversation between alice and the cat which you might have learned in your kindergarten days so let me take you back to the kindergarten days alice stated would you tell me please which way i ought to go from here alice is asking the cat which way i should go from here then the cat is replying that depends a good deal on where you want to go it depends a good deal on where you want to the cat says if i need to answer to your question i should know where exactly you need to go then alice says i don't much care where she says i don't have any idea i don't have not very clear about my objective i don't much care where then the cat replies then it doesn't matter 
which way you go if you don't have an objective if you don't have a passion then it doesn't matter which way you go my dear friends when you do a program like this when you do a program on beard or you know emit program you have to have clarity you need to have clarity on what exactly you want to achieve you should your objective should be clear your purpose should be clear you should know what are the comp- uh, mean the capabilities that you need to develop on completion of this program what are the skill set that you need to develop on completion of this program and what exactly you expect from this program and my dear friends this is something you know that uh, you need to understand when you do a uh, professional program like bed or emit and uh, with this i i conclude my presentation and i apologize for the break which i had uh, in between i'm sorry about it thank you and i'm willing to take questions if you have any thank you thank, thank you so much sir it was really wonderful session we got a lot of information on professional readiness let me call your words eat into a individual is a leader empower enrich and get transformed it's an honor for us to have you with us today thank you so much sir now the session is open for interaction dear audience if you have any doubt or question please drop it on the chat box or please unmute your mic and speak out i'm getting lot of messages so i thank each one uh, for the messages i'm i'm happy that you know it was of use to uh, many and you know i can't read out the names of all but i really thank you for your uh, feedback any questions so we have a question from agil ravindran <laughs> let me read it hmm. yeah sure is there any solution for stress in covid pandemic period uh, is, there any is there any is solution there any solution for stress in covid pandemic period okay can you be a little more uh, specific because you know uh, this is very generic kind of a question so if uh, it can be a little more specific then you know maybe i can give you a very very specific answer Ha ha. Okay, okay, okay. Right. See the problem, you know, which you face, you know, that you need to look at it from different perspective. Uh, uh because in my home, I have two young kids, one uh, in the third standard, another boy in the eighth standard. So I'm seeing, you know, probably one person enjoys it, another person find it as a stress. A third standard young girl enjoys it, but the eighth standard boy has got some problem he says that i would like to go back to the campus of course when you uh, when you are into a close room and uh, when you don't interact with your friends when you don't have that kind of uh, when you are not exposed definitely yes you will have stress but how do we overcome that how do we overcome that's a very good question that you know a gentleman asked how do we overcome that we need to overcome focus your interest on some you know uh, something which has which you know create interest for you maybe some singing or you know some music or you know you develop some videos on uh, on some specific concept which you are very much confident or you know interact with friends do some writing you know identify uh, you know that particular aspect which is of interest for you because this is something in you know, the most simplest way that you can overcome it because otherwise you know if you look at it as a uh, is stressful aspect yes sitting for 6 hours 6 continuous hours on internet will give you a lot of strain not only to the eyes but also you know the mental strain so my suggestion would be like you know identify your area of interest and then work on something 
something which i have told my little daughter i'll i'll tell i'll tell you she wrote a short story of 7 to 8 lines on a day so i just read it i found it is of course there were some mistakes but then i found it interesting so what i told her is each day you write a short story and when it reaches 100 we'll publish it as a book now probably i'd like to tell my friend who asked me this question is it possible for you to work on something and then bring out a book or something you know a book which will have value which you can you know which will be an asset for you which will you know explain who you are and that will demonstrate your brand value sir i do have a question ha <laughs> ha um thing is that uh, now i am seeing you uh, you are having a very cheerful face with a smile in your face carrying out and this is how the teachers or professors we handle the students in the classrooms so our as you have mentioned you know so we care a lot about our dressings our way we present the language we use the how the communications we make and the bindings we have with the students and the thing is that uh, none of the students are going to the schools just to learn the textbook alone because google is the best teacher as you also know it mm -hmm. uh so uh maybe this uh, online teaching method will be suitable for the higher educations uh those who would like to pursue in terms of research even in terms of research also sir uh as no as a research candidates we all observe our professors more uh how he connect to the people uh how he talks and uh, how he puts it in the paper we observe more uh, than we actually what we are assigned to do a job so that observing is actually missing so that means that all those what we have observed is that values that the individual values uh, uh organization like academic institution is a collection of individual values right and yeah. uh, this values is molded with an organizational values like yeah. that this bundle right. of students is moving out to the society right so how are we going to impart these values because since when you are talking i'm able to see you but in the online classes when we share the screen obviously the teacher is of no way okay. i'm not going, i will not be able to see the see my own teacher's face because that that subject will definitely become boring because when i deal in the class obviously my mannerism the way i talk or uh, the way i stand all these matters but in this online that is the biggest problem and that is a very big gap where uh, a student and a teacher is and right. this question is not been addressed even by the government or by the many of the academicians this value system so we are not going to live a world with the machines we are going to live with humans we need to interact right. with different set of values so how as a teachers right. we are going to break this we are going to Uh, mold the students with the values also along with the academics uh, okay it's a very interesting question you know in fact you know 3 weeks back i acted in a album for the first time that was my first attempt and the it was a, a story it's a family oriented story and the director wanted to be very very serious my role was as a very serious character but then he was telling me you have a smile you know even in you know when you act in a serious thing you have a smile so it it is my trait Uh, right fine i was just joking now i i know it's an important thing that you have mentioned madam now but uh, that is why i said you know the point which we discuss adaptability because we know that this is a situation that we have to face this is a reality that you know we cannot have an offline kind of a class in this environment so this is a reality that we need to accept now what next now as you mentioned a very very important point because you know when you have a one to one kind of interaction or you know when you have an uh, uh, personal interaction you know for even i mean basically if you look at the program which we are offering mba it's all about you know what you learn from your faculty is important and you are absolutely right on that now i'll tell you what i have done in my campus what we have done is uh, uh of course we have online sessions we do have online sessions of course two weeks of uh, offline session was possible was there but otherwise it was online session what i used to do was every day we have industry interaction a person a professional from the industry at the senior level interact with my students i had around 8000 man hours of industry interaction in the last 7 months 
so my suggestion is why don't uh, if you can uh, uh, collaborate with many institutions this is my my humble suggestion you collaborate with various institutions at national level then probably you can be you can take a session a short session for half an hour you know and you, it can be uh, other students from other campuses can you know listen to you and you know similarly every day if you can can have this kind of an interaction definitely you know that will give a, a different kind of insight to students and another thing which i do is for each of my student i have a mentor from the industry right from first semester to the last semester and that to at the ceo level 25% of my students have mentors from abroad uh, one um, uh, lady from switzerland is a mentor to my student couple of uh, mentors from uae and uh, i mean uk now the ad advantage is they are not a part of the institution but then they interact with the candidates and this is a personal interaction so now the thing advantage is the students you know they uh, open up a lot with these professional mentors you know who are the senior level of the ceos of company now another thing which i do is uh, once in uh, from 15 days we have some cultural programs happening online so the uh, everyone will be interested you know to uh, uh, show make a I mean the show their performance so they do record at home and then they present so uh, you have to have lighter moments also so this is something which we practice and uh, i am very i am very happy that you know my students are very happy over there and you know we have these kind of interactions happening around but you know madam as you rightly said yes we need uh, offline classes are required but going forward this is going to be the trend i am very sure very soon universities will have the shift system happening the morning to afternoon you will have a course running and the same facility will be utilized for running another course from afternoon onwards which means the hybrid model is going to be in existence couple of you will have some three days of class in the campus and then you will have uh, maybe another two three days of uh, uh, online sessions so this hybrid model is going to happen and this is going to be the trend so uh, as a students and as well as we all of us have to align to this kind of a model like you know if you look at foreign universities for that matter uh, generally they have three days of class or four three four days of class for four hours and then they go for work so this is a kind of model you know i remember in australia was a university where uh, you had 2000 students attending the class classroom is a big auditorium and there you cannot have a personalized kind of of course we used to, they use technology for you know managing you know the sessions but the point is this is something that uh, we need to understand and this is the model which is going to uh, uh, be uh, in future and therefore we we identify our own methods our own methodology because uh, otherwise you know there is no other go like you know as you mean but your point which you mentioned is very very true because the uh, uh, interactions you know with the faculty in a classroom is a totally different experience thank you so much sir it was really a wonderful session Thank you once again. To move further, I call upon Ms. Jabin Fatima, College Union Vice Chairperson, for the concluding remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. So before I start, Dr. George Bianchini, thank you, sir, for the most amazing talk. Thank you. So about a month ago, when we thought about an initiative that could make a difference, we were put. and benefit people as well as the whole agreed on doing something distinctive on world youth skills day world youth skills day 2021 will take place in a challenging context with the continuation of the covid-19 pandemic resulting in the widespread disruption of the training sector and we thought why should we let the pandemic get in the way of reimagining skills the brainstorming discussions and deliberations finally precipitated into super 7 a national level web talk series which elucidated on not one but many skills now as we have finally reached the final day of super 7 it's really overwhelming to know super 7 turned out to be a bigger success than we envisioned sprawled across 7 days we had seven oven spiring speakers 
talk about seven skills. Skills which were carefully chosen to cater to the needs of the digital age with special focus on the teaching country that went through a tremendous change over the last year. Over the past week, we had seven speakers with great erudition speak to us. We had sessions on public speaking by Mariam Roth, cyber safety by Mr. A. Pramod, digital literacy by Dr. A. Biju, media literacy by Mrs. Ruchya Sharma Atmihotri, conflict resolution by Mr. Sony Thomas, social networking by Mr. K. Thiagu, professional readiness by Dr. George V. Anthony. Though we have been juggling online and offline classes and doing what needs to be done, these seven days have served to equip us better to be finer versions of ourselves personally and professionally. Until last week, if you were doing the bare minimum, I'm sure, you are motivated and armed to do what is required to do to be the best. Because after Super 7, we are prepared to encompass the application of a wide spectrum of practices, including blended and virtual learning effectively. All these seven days, when we saw packed GMAT sessions in a matter of few seconds, we knew our vision has served its purpose. Though we have an official word of thanks lined up right after this, I would like to extend a quick word of thanks to our principal, Dr. Mariama Matthew. Never have I heard her say no. Be it a webinar, a new event, academic or non-academic, she's always up for it with all the support we need. Thank you, ma'am. Union advisors, Dr. Velaitan IOT, you shared an idea with Gelu, sir. The next thing you see is the brochure. Has always prepared to give us best no matter what. Thank you, Velu, sir, for being you. Dr. Sony Mary Vergas has always been with us every step we take with a smile and enthusiasm so infectious. Thank you, ma'am. A word of appreciation to all my fellow union members who worked around the clock to make this happen. Finally, a big thanks to our dear teachers and friends for being the rock upon which our achievements are built. I'm glad we are what we are and we make a fine team. Thank you. Thank you, Jebin. Now I invite Ms. Rilakshmi V from the first year beer to propose the word of thanks. Thank you, Safna. Am I audible? Yes, Rilakshmi. Okay. Respected principal, honorable chief guest, teachers, program conveners, a warm good afternoon to one and all. It is a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this closing ceremony of the web talk series, Super 7, which had been going on for the last six days. In the Super 7 program, we came across seven super skills, which were really interesting, informative, and apt for this modern scenario. Today, I would like to thank our respected principal, Dr. Mariama Matthew, who always stood as a strong pillar of support in every matter concerning to the college and students. Thank you, ma'am, for your kind support and effort from the, from the bottom of my heart. On behalf you, of Pete you. Memorial Training College, Mavilikera, I extend my heartfelt thanks to our keynote speaker of this day, Dr. George V. Anthony, sir, Director, Provident School of Business. Sir, you have delivered a wonderful session on professional readiness, which is one of the important skills as far as the teaching community is concerned. Once again, a big thanks to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, I would like to express my gratitude to Anu Ma'am, who has delivered the welcome speech to this valedictory session and the convener of today's program. Thank you, Ma'am. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Anuja Ma'am for organizing today's program again. Thank you, Ma'am. It is my immense pleasure to express my sincere thanks to our Mumtaz Ma'am and the student representative, Ms. Minu M, who have delivered the felicitation for this valedictory session. Thank you. We cannot organize a program successfully if it is properly planned and guided. In this context, I would like to ex express my sincere thanks to the union advisors, Sri Velai Dhanaya, sir, and Sony, ma'am. Thank you, sir, and ma'am, from the bottom of my heart. 
Now, I would like to express my thanks to Ms. Libby Lambodaran for introducing the speaker and Ms. Safna Shah Jahan for hosting the web talk session. Thank you. Now, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to all our college union members, especially the student convener for today's program, Ms. Lakshmi Mohan, and to all our teachers for their cooperation in organizing this Super 7 web talk series. Thank you all. Next, I express my gratitude to Ms. Jebin Fatima, the student representative who has delivered the concluding remarks, and also to the college choir team. Thank you. Audience have also an important role in each and every program. No doubt, it is your active participation that made our program a big success. Last but not the least, I thank you all for I thank you all the audience who are watching our program through the YouTube Live and the Google Meet platform for, for your cooperation in making this seven-day function a resounding success. Once again, thank you all. Thank you, Sri Lakshmi. Dear audience, please make sure to click on the feedback link which is provided in the chat box. So here comes to the end of our Super 7 event, which is scheduled from 9th July to the 15th July today. I don't much care where, then the cat replies, then it doesn't matter which way you take. Thank you all. Thank you all for the support and participation. Now it's time for our national anthem. I wish you a very happy World Youth Girls Day once again. Thank you so much.